Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Jay Hill, and this video is going to be a short breakdown of my Judge Dredd render of from the previous video. Uh, I got several questions and people curious about what I did to finish it. So I made this video that breaks down my Photoshop file and the couple things I did in Keyshot. So anyways, hope you enjoy the video. So here's the final image I ended up with. You can see here there's layers, but first thing was in ZBrush, I did a couple things. Uh, first, I exported the texture map of the face. I knew that I could use the materials in Keyshot to get some more results that I wanted, but the face, I had some color in here, um, and I wanted, I wanted to try to preserve that. So uh, what I did was, since that's poly paint, I went over here to texture map, and under create, I went new from poly paint, and then exported it. So now that I had my exported texture map that I could load in Keyshot, I moved this over to Keyshot. And the way you do that is over here in Render, External Renderer, you turn on Keyshot. And when you hit BPR, it'll, it'll bridge it over and send it over to Keyshot. So once I was in Keyshot, the models in Keyshot, then I started applying the materials. So in here, you get a breakdown of all your different assets and so from the materials panel I went over and chose materials uh, that I liked and I would try them out like uh, say um, say in the say the red trim I would go to paint and look for like a red paint kind of thing um, like right here I'll start with this and drag it over and drop it uh, and then from here you have if you go to the materials in your scene then you get a list of all the materials that are just applied here um, so if I double click this red paint these are the options now for this red paint so let's say I could make it glossier for instance so it's now gonna be a little bit shinier so then I tweak this for a while I mean I spent a lot of time in here just uh, you know experimenting see what happens the lighting comes from the image the version of Keyshot that I got with ZBrush doesn't have the full HDR image editor, but I just did some Google searching of HDR images, Keyshot HDR images, and downloaded a bunch and put them all in a folder. And so I go through them depending on whatever situation I want. And so this one is I just it's just a studio. You can see here that um, someone took the 360 photo of a lighting studio, and so I just used that, and then I tweaked the contrast and brightness to get the results I want. Uh, this isn't the exact image used in the final image, but the idea is the same. I rotate it around and I change these values here to get the result I want. And in this case, it was I wanted the edge to be lit so that it would pop off the background and uh, make it a little more interesting. Uh, and also, I thought it'd be cool to, it kind of outlines this irregular edge and then his stubble poking out. And also the chin coming out, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a good view for the dread kind of like character. So that texture map is loaded up into the skin shader. Uh, the skin shader is over here under translucent. I just dragged human skin on and then I messed with these settings and then here's the texture here, face tiff. That's what I exported from ZBrush. So I put that in there and then I messed with the translucency. I think it starts at four which is really high uh, for what I was doing so I lowered it quite a bit and what this translucency number is doing is it's kind of it's, it's faking the when light comes into things like skin, uh, the light penetrates in and then bounces around in all the cells in here. So light is kind of coming in and then spreading. So you get kind of a glow, like how you can see light through, a, through your finger, um, but it's obscured, it's like blurry. The shadows get a little bit blurrier because light is bleeding through everywhere. Um, so anyways, you get a different look. And so it's important to mess around with shaders like this with these special features so that the skin definitely looks different than glass and metal and paint and that's what makes the image work and look a little bit more interesting and realistic. You know, you get all those different materials contrasting on each other, it makes it pretty cool looking. So I messed with this number, made it 1.5. You see here how the shadow's uh, blurrier here uh, and light's bleeding through. So then after this, uh, I move it over to Photoshop, turn off all these layers and go through it. So this is the beauty that I first did uh, and you can see here I had this I had the skin be pretty shiny um, 
because I knew I could control it later and I rendered out a couple other passes. So we have this pretty shiny image and this helmet you see is super shiny, which I ended up editing because I was like, ah, oh, that's way too shiny, what the heck? So you start with this beauty image and then we'll go through the layers here. This is, I'm just hiding the fact that it's a um, floating in space. So I just, I just like faded out to black. And then here's the, the um, medallion up here that is the shield that's like a silver because I like this material and I was having trouble getting gold in key shot in this lighting condition. So I just did a, a color uh, gradient and made it more gold. I just changed the colors here. Uh, so then here's the visor. I did like a little strip. Um, that way I could get like in the original dread concept the bottom is kind of clear there's like a clear stripe and then everything else is shiny and there's always like a shiny line here so I did that right here uh, and then there's a spec pass that I did I just moved the light and made it shinier and then overlaid it here this is on a screen layer the next layer is a five o'clock shadow and that's just a color layer that I changed the color and saturation to make the hair follicles look a little bit more believable and outline that hair pattern and get more color variation in there too because it was too like you see it's like very pink and orange so um, I added this layer here and that's uh, that's just a hue saturation layer and then I put a mask on it and then I just painted where I wanted it to be so here's me darkening the helmet because it was way too bright and then here we have overlays so this is just like a, uh, a texture that has variation that's the texture. It's just like a leather thing that I got from the internet. And I soft light it on there so that it looks a little bit more, you know, like believable leather. At least it's more noisy that way. It's not perfect. And then the helmet is this grime, my little grime layer. And that is like a noisy dirt image. Again, uh, a lot of these textures, I mean, I'll just Google grime texture and stuff. Uh, but a lot of these textures might be from cgtextures.com that's a website I frequent to get stuff I'll just go there and type in dirt crime whatever and then I set it to multiply so only the only the dark bits are there and you can see that I painted out like I erased um, smudges and scratches so that you get effects like this so it looks like the dirt is a little smudged around then next up is the blood Blah. so we'll go through these there, this is just the blood on the shirt and then there's some on the chin like a splatter kind of thing and then here's some drops like it got splattered and then dropped down uh, and then here's a spray like it like it sprayed up everywhere uh, and these are little droplets that I painted um, the lighting so that you know it matched the lighting a little bit more just so it looks like they're kind of three-dimensional fresh wet droplets um, this is a really subtle layer that's just high this highlights a little bit of the stuff. And then so here's a paint over layer. Well, this doesn't make sense until I add the the AO. So this ambient occlusion is rendered out of key shot also. And the way that that's done is I make the scene white, I make everything white. So let's see. So in the environments tab, this comes with this comes with key shot. You don't need to download this, it's just all white. And I'll just drag it into the background here. And then I'll make the material white. So we can just use um, this matte gray. And if I drag it on the top of this tree here, then it goes into everything. So if you see this matte gray, I mean, it's already working, but then I'll make it pure white. So now this is essentially is my ambient occlusion shadow pass. So then I'll render this out after I rendered out my beauty at the same size and then bring that in and when I bring that in it'll look something like this and then I can multiply that on there and that's how I get the shadows and all the cracks and stuff so it gives it a much more natural and realistic look uh, and that's how I get the ambient inclusion on the key shot now I can show the paint over so the paint over is just me kinda you can see I'm darkening this because I want the focus to be up here and I'm also I'm kind of faking that the lights coming in like it's like it's lighting the helmet and stuff so I'm using that direction to light things I want to draw attention to like the crack the glass here I want to pop it off uh, the edge here I make it look like a little shinier so all in all I'm just drawing your attention to this 
uh, area and trying to pop things away from each other and describe the things that are there. This is a curves. It might make this look a little too dark on YouTube. I don't know, but this curves just made it look a little more intense. I just to balance the contrast. And then I added the backdrop again, really subtle, but just so there's a little bit of light here. So it describes it and pops it off more. And that's it. There you have it. Now you have the final image of Dread. And that's what I did in Keyshot and in Photoshop. That's a little breakdown. Hopefully that was informative a little bit and you liked that. Next time I do one of these, I'll record the whole process. It's a little boring. It's a lot, like you saw, there's a lot of waiting around when you're rendering and a lot of experimentation. Uh, but either way, I think it, it'd it be cool to just show it so you can see. I mean, it's not like a first try thing. I'm trying stuff all the time and it's not working and I'm waiting around for a render. And in the end, it comes down to kind of subtle things. I get kind of noodly with it and uh, you know, I don't really set a timer on myself or anything. I just keep playing with it until I like it. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Click that like button and I'll see you next time. My last video goes over ZBMesher and Dynamesh and when to use those. For more subjects and videos, please drop a comment. If you like it, like it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Okay, see you next time. Peace!